Hi everyone, this is Laura Hammock from the Marble Jar Channel, and in today's video I'll share the process that I used to digitize all of my old photos. So occasionally I have these morbid thoughts about what, would, what we might lose if our house burned down. I determined that as long as I got my family and my dog out safely, the only thing I would really mourn were all of our old pictures. So I got my first digital camera in 2001, but I graduated from high school in 1989. So that is 12 years worth of pictures that are not digitized and that do not have backups. Plus, there were some momentous things that happened during, during that period, like our wedding and our honeymoon, for which I have like three albums of photographs. Would I be upset if something were to happen to all of those? Yes. So I embarked on a project to digitize all of them and put them up in the cloud. So I considered using one of the services online where you can mail away your photos and then get them back digitized on a thumb drive. There were two issues. Number one, one of my albums was done scrapbook style with the photos that are glued to the pages and I would have had to destroy the scrapbook and probably some of the photos to mail them away. And then number two, it's expensive. One service offered 250 pictures for $250. One gave a quote of 40 cents per picture, which sounded more reasonable, but I have over a thousand photos and shelling out that kind of cash did not sound so appealing to me. So I figured there's no rush, right? I can handle this project a little at a time once I developed a process. You know, I could do like an album a week when I had time. So as an aside, that totally didn't happen. Once I started, I spent every free waking moment doing this until I had finished in just under a week. Okay, so there are three steps to this process. Scan, modify, and upload. So I'm gonna take you through each one. First, scan. So there are lots of ways to scan photos. You can now use your phone as a scanner if you use a scanning app like PhotoScan. The biggest issue with photos is reflected light. So PhotoScan requires you to take four different photos at different angles to remove the reflection, which is time consuming. In the end, I decided to invest in a reasonably priced flatbed scanner. So mine was $70 on Amazon and it stores easily, which was another consideration for me. The scanner comes with its own scanning software, which was a little glitchy, but it worked well enough for my needs. So I just double click on this icon and the scanning would start automatically and it would save the, the file into my pictures folder. So I decided that scanning individual photos was too time consuming, but putting too many photos on the scanner made cropping difficult. So I settled on three photos per scan when at all possible. The scanning software would attempt to automatically determine the edges of the scan so the file would look like this, making it really easy to crop. So obviously the big scrapbook pages, um, I didn't have a choice. I had to scan the whole thing in multiple parts. Modify. Okay, so here's my scan file. Obviously I'm gonna have to modify a bit to make it usable. So I found using the Windows Photo app worked really well for rotating and cropping. It also helps that, the, that it is the default app that opens up pictures on my PC. So I double click on the file, it opens, and I can rotate it, and then I can crop photo one, I can save a copy, I can crop photo two, and save a copy of that one, and finally I can crop photo three and save the file. So that way, when I'm finished, I have three distinct photos in three different files. Okay, so the photos look good, but I have to do one last thing, change the date. So my cloud photo service of choice is Google Photos. I love lots of things about Google Photos. You can see my many videos on the ways that I use it, but it does have some limitations. So one is that your photos are always sorted by the date taken. You can't sort by anything else, name, location, et cetera. It's always chronological. The problem, as you probably have already guessed, is that the old photos that I've just scanned have today's date on them. So they would be sorted in with pictures that I am actually taking today. So having this hodgepodge of new and old photos together might be okay for some people, but it is not okay for me. So how do you change the date that is stored in the metadata of the photo? So luckily you can change it using Windows File Explorer. So choose a photo, right click on it, choose properties, and then do the details tab. So now you can change the date right here, which is what Google Photos uses for sorting. Even better, you can change the date for multiple photos using this process as well. So like the hundreds of photos from my wedding, well, they were all taken on the same date, obviously. So how annoying would it be to have to change each date individually with those hundreds of photos? 
So select multiple photos by either using Shift for consecutive photos or Control for non-consecutive photos. Right click, choose properties, then details, then change the date. You're going to click in and out of the folder um, occasionally to make sure that you have changed every date on each photo. So you can preview the date by hovering over the picture. Okay, so now you're ready to upload to Google Photos. So Google makes this super simple. I create a split screen by dragging File Explorer to one side and Google Photos to the other. Now select all of your photos and drag and drop them onto Google Photos. Voila! In a couple of minutes, it has uploaded your photos and it has sorted them according to the date that you set. So just a quick note about process. I did not do each step one picture at a time. That would have been inefficient. So instead, I scanned an entire album of photos, around 150 pictures per album. Then I rotated and cropped the entire album. Then I changed the dates using bulk date change when at all possible. Then uploaded all of them to Google Photos. So when I was done, I created a folder up here called Uploaded, and I dragged and dropped these photos into it. So my pictures folder would be nice and clean when I would start the process again with a new album. And that is it. I have been sending friends old photos and feeling nostalgic. It's so much easier for me to share and find photos if I can easily access them on my phone. And not that I want my house to burn down, but if it did, at least these old photos would not be lost. Let me know what you think. Comments are always appreciated and thanks for watching.